Hey guys, Mark Boswell here, Boswell Emergency Medical Education. I'm going to spend a few minutes trying to explain the answer to the blood gas problem I gave you uh, yesterday or the day before, where the person overdosed on the Tums. So the scenario given was a person had overdosed on this bottle of Tums, and what's the ingredient in Tums that we're going to worry about as far as our metabolic condition? It's going to be the calcium carbonate that's in there. Calcium carbonate acts like a bicarb analog, and it's going to have the same effect as taking too much bicarb. So what what condition would you suspect from a Tums overdose? We should expect a metabolic alkalosis to be at least the predominant or the underlying disorder in this patient. So that's what we'll be looking for in these answers. So we're looking for a metabolic alkalosis. Let's look at these answers and try and identify each one. Now I've already told you, I think, yes I did, I told you that letter A was the correct answer. So let's skip that one for just a minute and let's look at the other three and go ahead and give them names. Let's just work through them as we do in the class. Let's start with the pH for letter B, 7.53. That is an alkaline pH. It's above the normal range of 7.35 to 4.5. Let's look at the CO2. The CO2 is 25. That is too low. That is correct. The normal range being 7.35 to 4.5. So 7.25, my CO2 is low. I've lost some of my CO2. My CO2 is making me be alkalotic in this case. My bicarb of 20 is too low also. My normal range for my bicarb is 22 to 26. So looking specifically just at the bicarb, if I take away or I reduce some of the bicarb content, that leaves me more alkaline. So in this case, for letter B, this condition is actually primarily a respiratory um, alkalosis with the bicarb um, is trying to compensate. But in this case, it's not completely compensated because the pH is still abnormal. So the name for letter B would be a partially compensated respiratory alkalosis. Okay, everybody get that? So the patient's hyperventilating, possibly, um, and their metabolic system is trying to kick in to compensate, but it's not compensated yet. So the underlying problem here is respiratory. This would not be the answer for our Tums overdose. Let's look at letter C. pH is 7.49. This also is too high, so this is alkaline. The CO2 of 30, normal range of, thir of 35 to 45, so this is low also. So in this case, with the CO2 being low, um, it is going to cause an alkaline influence and it's going to be causing the pH to go up. So the underlying problem here is a respiratory problem also, a respiratory alkalosis. Let's look at the CO2 of the bicarb of 22. That's at the low end of normal. All right, It's still within normal range, 22 to 26. So in this case, letter C is an uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. Okay, the patient's, again, maybe hyperventilating for whatever reason, and the kidneys and the metabolic component is starting to compensate, but it's not um, started to compensate yet. It's still within the normal range. So letter C is uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. So right now, B and C are wrong answers. Remember, we're looking for a metabolic alkalosis, and B and C are both respiratory alkalosis uh, in origin. Let's look at letter D. 7.57, okay, that's alkaline. It is elevated above the normal range. Let's look at the CO2, CO2 of 25. Again, this is low. The CO2, which is an acid, has been lost, leading us to a more alkaline type state. Let's look at the bicarb now. Bicarb of 28, that is too high. All right, when bicarb's too high, that also leads you towards alkaline. So I need to ask myself, can I identify between the CO2 and the bicarb, which is causing my pH to be alkaline? I can't, because th there's no way to tell from the information given. So the actual formal name for letter D would be a mixed, a mixed type disorder or a mixed gas. It's got both components of respiratory as well as metabolic. Let me get the light back on here. D has both comp components of the respiratory and the metabolic system being the problem, causing the alkalosis. So we cannot, you know, could it be the answer? It could be, but let's see if there's a better one. So we've thrown out B and C. We're keeping D as a possibility. Let's look at letter A, which I told you was the right answer. First and foremost, pH is 7.44, all right? Well, that's within normal range. 7.35 to 7.45 is your normal range. However, as I've told you in the lectures and as I tell you in class, anytime you have a normal pH, you need to make that second decision of which side is the pH on. Is it on the acid side or the alkaline side? And to do that, we draw the line down the middle of the pH as 7.40. If it's below 7.40, we say it's on the acid side. If it's above 7.40, we say it's on the alkaline side. So for the pH for letter A, we would actually say it's within normal limits, 
but it's on the alkaline side of things, that 7.44, so that's on the high side of normal. All right, let's look at the CO2. 52, I've got too much CO2 on board. CO2 is an acid. With too much acid in my body, that's gonna make my pH acid. Is the CO2 causing the pH to be on the acid side? No, it's not. So my respiratory parameter here is not the cause, or my respiratory system is not the cause of the problem. Look at the bicarb, 28. That is too high, that's above normal range for bicarb. When bicarb goes up, it makes the pH become alkaline also. So does, so the bicarb in this case does answer why my pH is elevated on the al alkaline side of things. Okay, so the actual formal name for answer A is a compensated metabolic alkalosis. It's compensated because the CO2 has elevated it enough to offset the pH and bring it within normal limits. And remember our rules we talk about. The pH will never compensate beyond midline. It will never compensate below 7.40, nor will it ever compensate above 7.40. So in this case, the 7.44 was always on the alkaline side of normal. The CO2 is adjusted enough to bring it within the normal range and the body starts to slow down the compensation and hold its pattern at that time. So the best answer for this, pro well what we're left with is two answers. Is answer A, compensated metabolic alkalosis the best answer? Or is answer D, the mixed disorder, the best answer? In the test scenario, we really need to go with the best one that most specifically or most exactly or closest answers the problem. So in this case, a more definitively answers the problem because at least you know A is a metabolic problem. It's a comp part, it's a compensated metabolic alkalosis, whereas letter D is mixed. You have no idea if it's a respiratory or the alkalosis or the, the bicarb causing the problem. So that's how we get the answer. The best answer for this problem is answer A, and I think some people got thrown off because they saw the normal pH, but if you think about it and work through it and give each of, these, just each of the sets of answers a name, you usually will come up with the right answer. Okay. I hope that helps. Um, please give me, give me a comment or some feedback if that helps you understand that or not. Remember, my ABG lecture is for free on YouTube as well also. It goes through how to label these and work each problem individually. Um, good job for you guys. I appreciate Even though you know a lot of people got the wrong answer, I do appreciate you guys participating. Um, it's nice to see you guys are engaging, and I enjoy that. Uh, it gives me a chance to know where I need to tweak up or kind of spend more time explaining things. All right? So keep watching the page. More stuff coming. Always trying to challenge you guys to think a little bit outside the box and give you some new information from our time. And you guys take care, have a safe night. And tonight was that super moon full night, so hopefully everybody had a good night at work. If you're working night shift and it wasn't too crazy for you. All right, Mark Boswell, Boswell Emergency Medical. I will see you guys later. Bye.